There are a lot of really good gaming mice out there at the moment, but these three are typically considered the top contenders. The G Pro Superlite, the Final Mouse Starlight 12, and the new Razer Viper V2 Pro. Now, of course, there are a bunch of different gaming mice that are worthy of mention in this video, and you know, we'll get to those eventually, but these ones are by far the most that I get asked about. They all share a bit in common. You know, they're all flagships among the respective companies. They're all very lightweight designs as well, and they're all very popular among pro players. The question is though, which one is the best? Well, before we get to my own thoughts on the shapes and how they are to actually play with, let's talk numbers. Click input lag, in fact, is one of the most important metrics that you guys should care about when it comes to different gaming mice. This is the time delay between physically clicking the mouse button and that click or gunshot, for example, then being registered on the screen. Keep in mind though, this is the entire end-to-end -end latency. So the millisecond values that you're about to see also include system latency of our test bench and that of the monitor as well. By keeping all of these other external values and variables constant though, we can get some very repeatable and interesting results. Firstly, Logitech and Razer really have their stuff dialed in to the point where I can pick up any modern Logitech or Razer gaming mouse and I already feel pretty confident that it's going to perform pretty top of the pack. The Razer Viper V2 Pro seems to have a slight edge on the Superlight, although we're talking about half a millisecond here on average, and I believe that's due to using the optical switches. The only other way to get a faster click response time than this is to increase the polling rate of the mouse as shown by the Viper 8K and the Zon Koenig M2K, which both use 8000 Hz polling rate. As for the Final Mouse Starlight 12, well, Final Mouse claim to have the fastest click response on the market, but I've tested these mice back to back numerous times and I kept getting the same results. The Starlight 12 seems to be about four milliseconds slower than the Super Light and V2 Pro. There is another input lag metric that we should care about though, and that's when it comes to the responsiveness of the sensor. So as opposed to measuring the time it takes to register a single click, here we're measuring the delay before picking up that initial mouse movement. All mice that I've tested here have been set to 800 dpi to keep the sensor resolution the same, and they're all moved at the exact same speed on this custom rig that I've built here. Basically, it just uses an Arduino Mega with two stepper motors to move the mouse, and to measure the sensor movement delay, I'm using NVIDIA's LDAT on a 360Hz monitor. This testing is actually highly repeatable, and just like the click latency testing, we've accounted for and controlled for as many variables as possible. And again, the values that we're looking at here are from end to end. So from the initial mouse movement all the way up to that movement being displayed on screen. And yeah, we do get some pretty interesting results. The G Pro Superlight and the Viper V2 Pro are roughly equal at around 21 milliseconds. And the final mouse Starlight 12 comes in at about two milliseconds slower. What really surprised me though, that M2K has a sensor response about five milliseconds faster than those three mice, which might not sound like a lot, but that is an absolute huge jump in this testing. Part of that is due to using an 8000 Hz polling rate, which you can see the Viper 8K is not too far behind with that spec as well, but still the M2K makes up even more ground somehow. So G Pro Superlight, Razer Viper V2 Pro and Final Mouse Starlight 12, as far as I'm concerned, the input lag experience for all three of these mice is virtually identical. Now, you could say the Final Mouse Starlight 12 is like four milliseconds slow when it comes to the clicks, two milliseconds slow when it comes to the sensor, but realistically, that's just not a difference that you and I should really care about. Most of us here are just playing online multiplayer shooters, and that few milliseconds is just not gonna have a realistic impact. And look, for those of you out there who are breaking Kovacs world records or competing at LAN tournaments, then yeah, maybe that few millisecond difference could be something to, you know, consider consider, but it's kind of weird to even say then because there are people doing both of those things with the Starlight 12. And look, I'm by no means trying to minimize my own testing here. It's of course very useful when it comes to identifying the outliers like the M2K or the Origin 1X, for example, where there might be top performers or, you know, some problems, but just have a bit of perspective when mice are only a couple milliseconds apart. Now, the initial goal for this sensor latency rig right here, and honestly why it's kind of overkill for simply moving a mouse a few millimeters from left to right, was actually to measure the differences in tracking accuracy of different mouse sensors. That is, if you take two mice and move them across the same simulated path, how would that tracking data compare? Unfortunately, I'm not there just yet. I need a much heavier, stiffer, and more precise machine before we can dive into the tiny tracking differences between these different mice. But I just wanna let you guys know that's kind of what we're working towards here. That way, we'll be finally able to look at the differences between sensors, firmware, and the effect that different DPI has on tracking. Because let's be honest, that might be the 
only thing comparing all of these top tier mice in the future. All right, but number stuff over, let's talk about the shape and how they feel in the hand. All three of them honestly are pretty neutral and conventional, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. It's good because most hand sizes and grip preferences will be able to find something that works on these very neutral shell designs, but at the same time, they aren't really optimized for any kind of grip style. And it's kind of conflicting. Many of us have been critical of the boring oblong shape of the G Pro Super Lite, but today this is what most pros are using and making insane plays with. Even for myself, after trying extremely well-shaped mice like the G303, the MZ1, or the Zygon NP01, I actually play more confidently on the G Pro Super Lite. It's a shape that, with enough time, most people will find a grip that feels decently comfortable. Part of that is due to just how good the coding is on this mouse. It is extremely grippy, and this is super evident when you're switching back and forth between different mice. The Viper V2 Pro, for example, has this weird silky coating, which I'm personally not a fan of. The coating on the Starlight is a bit better, but even with side grips, it's not up to the standard of the Super Light. The shape of the Razer and the Final Mouse are noticeably more flat as well, so if you're someone who prefers a bit more hand contact with the mouse, the Super Light will feel a lot more natural. The Starlight 12 can kind of get away with this because it is just overall smaller as well, so being flatter, it doesn't affect it too much. But for me, the Razer Viper shape has always felt a bit flat for how large it is. And to be honest, I'm not really sure what the hype is about with the new Viper V2 Pro. To me, it feels like a lighter Viper Ultimate, and that's really it. The scroll wheel is still stiff and small, the optical switches still feel kind of hollow, the coding is weird. I mean, big thumbs up to Razer for getting the weight down to where it is because that does matter, but I do feel like the Super Light is the better choice overall. That is unless you really do like this shape for some reason, which is totally valid. For example, if you have a Model O or a regular Viper and you're looking for an upgrade with the same shape, the V2 Pro would be a suitable choice then. So where does the Final Mouse Starlight 12 fit into all of this? Well, considering that you can't buy them at the moment unless you're looking to pay a couple hundred dollars on the secondhand market, it's kind of hard to consider it at all. Basically, it's an epic mouse if you're willing to pay the price and prefer something smaller. I do also feel that potentially the Starlight 12 might have the highest skill ceiling out of the three, being the lightest and the smallest. And then speaking of lightest and smallest, we have to talk about the Zorn Koenig M2K as well. Not just brutally lightweight at 23 grams, but as we saw, it also has the fastest click response and sensor response of any other mouse that I've tested. It's also brutally expensive at 300 euros, but as an aiming tool, this is personally the best thing that I I've used. I've actually kept using it after the review a couple of weeks ago and yeah I've hit a nice couple of clips here and there. Most of all it's just a really enjoyable and fun mouse to use. 23 grams feels like cheating half the time and of course if we're mentioning the Super Light and Starlight as top tier mice we do have to mention this as well. But if I had to pick just one of these mice as a top mainstream recommendation it'd have to be the G Pro Super Light. Really can't go wrong with this for most grip styles and hand sizes. 60 grams is incredibly light for most people. I think we'll agree, and as consistently demonstrated, Logitech have their firmware and software pretty dialed in. But as I said in the intro though, there are a lot of really good gaming mice at the moment. Like there are so, so many, some that I haven't even bothered mentioning yet or you know featuring in videos, simply because the list goes on and on. Options like the Fnatic Bolt or the G-Wolves Hardy S Wireless or the Vaxi Zygon NP01. These are all good gaming mice, really, really good in fact. So if you don't feel like spending hundreds of dollars for what I'd consider the best options today, realistically, you're not too far behind with these cheaper ones instead. In fact, I have no doubt that you could become absolutely insane with any of these options with enough practice. They might not be top tier, but you put these in the hands of any decent player and they'll still pop off. I'm also very keen to check out the upcoming Endgame Gear XM2 wireless and the ExtraFi MZ1 wireless. I mean, if your choice wasn't difficult enough, those should be incredibly good upcoming mice as well. So hopefully you found this video helpful. There are just so many great options at the moment. And it's really hard to make a choice on what's best gonna suit you. I think we'll end up doing something like a tier list. That way we can kind of rapidly go through a lot of the options that are out there because yeah, it's becoming kind of impossible to cover them all. Uh, if you are looking for an upgrade, I will have some options listed down below. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.